Hello guys and girls, welcome to another repair video. So today we're going to be looking at another Xbox One S which has been sent in by a customer. And the customer said that they um, was using this console up until about a year ago and um, suddenly it, um, it stopped working. So basically it's a no power and they tried a new power supply to no avail. They said that they've had someone test the power regulation MOSFETs but didn't have the tools to fix them. Um, and he determined it was that, but I'm never going to believe anyone else until I see it um, because they could be wrong. So we're going to take a look at this. I thought I'd do a quick video on it because I thought it might be another interesting one. Um, first of all, as always, we're going to go ahead and test. All right, so we're going to pop in some power with a non good power cable. We're going to pop in a HDMI cable and we're going to see if we get anything on the screen. So this uh, console has been opened, the warranty sticker has been removed. Um, but yeah, let's see if we get anything on the screen, let's see what's happening. Okay, so no power at all, nothing whatsoever when we switch it on. Alright, let's delve straight into it and open this puppy up, see what we can figure out with it. And see if we can get it working for the customer again. Make it a nice, happy little console again. So, um, if you haven't noticed, I'm wearing my hood. It's very, very cold outside. It's very, very dark. It's very, very late. Uh, and, of course, I'm still here in my workshop working away. It is 10.46pm. So, hopefully, I can get this done as quickly as possible. And, hopefully, we can get some rest because I've been working all day. And, I've done nothing but consoles. And, uh starting to get a little bit repetitive so ho hopefully we've got a more interesting video for you guys fingers crossed let's see if we can get this out without damaging it shall we uh, the reason I want to try and get it done without damaging it is because the customer has already taken it apart without damaging it so he's a better he's better at disassembly than me I should hire him just to disassemble these things for me but uh, yeah so he said he's already tried a power supply I'm obviously going to try my own non good power supply before we uh, sit there and strip down the motherboard he could have got unlucky and got a, a bad power supply um, so of course I'm going to have to test it with my own non good and let's see what's happening. Um, I can actually put it on the bench supply so I can see what it's reading. Um, first of all, I'm going to unplug it and just check for a short on the 12 volt rail uh, with the multimeter. Okay, dog. That was uh, that come out nice and easily. Good, sweet, and as you can see, no pro damage. Uh, I'm getting a bit better at opening these. Uh, there's a little bit of a. Oh no, there's not. I thought there was a bend in it. Never mind. It's just the lighting. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Let's quickly disassemble this. I'll fast forward through. We've seen enough of these. We don't need to. We don't need to uh, do another video on how to dis disassemble an Xbox One S. So I'll see you all in a moment. Alright, so the case is open. We can access the parts inside. Just going to check first of all the connector. Make sure that's in. Um, I got one the other day and um, the guy said it didn't work and he disconnected the connector. Um, I have recorded a video, I haven't edited it yet. That's an interesting one, so you should really go and watch that. That's going to come out before this one. Right, so just to show you this is the same console. Uh, we've got the power plugged in. Um, and obviously, if we tug on it, it's not going to come out. So, power is plugged in. Uh, it is the same console. And we're going to get the power lead again. <clears throat> and just press the power button 
Nope, nothing. Uh, let's try eject. Nada. Okay. Cool. So, obviously, I knew that that was going to make no difference at all, but... Uh, yeah, just for the sake of uh, integrity. Right, okay. So, let's pop out the power supply. Okie doke. Next, we're going to take the multimeter, and uh, if you'll notice, I'll have a new multimeter. This time, it's got a, a little cable coming out the back of it. Uh, so what I did, I um, melted myself a hole with the soldering iron, and uh, hardwired a 9-volt power cable to the battery terminals, because I got sick and tired of buying 9-volt batteries. Uh, because I always leave my multimeters on. This one's okay, this one goes off on its own, but I always leave my multimeters on and it does my head in having to buy a battery every week or two. Um, three pound a time, those things add up over the year. <coughs> Excuse me, right, so we're going to test for continuity uh, between ground and 12 volts. So let's get this over a little bit closer to the camera. Table's a bit of a mess, I've done a lot of work today, haven't had a chance to clean yet. But uh, yeah, we'll get there. Right. Okay, so to test the shorts on the 12 volt rail, we've got the connectors where the power goes in from the power supply. Uh, that's this little black connector here, and we've got three, two rows of three connectors. So the back three are going to be ground, and the front three are going to be the 12 volt rail. So to test for continuity we just stick one probe in one of these ground probes and the other probe in the 12 volt and we have a short to ground. So that's going to be something to do with the power regulation MOSFETs. Yep. Okay, let's crack this open. Let's get this motherboard out of here and let's Let's clear this short, shall we? Uh, or let's try and clear this short, shall we? Um, right, where's my screwdriver? There we are. <coughs> so the entire board is going to have to come out. I kind of like the HDMI retimers on these because we don't need to take the board out to do it. It's pretty cool. Anyway, um, enough talking. Um, I'll see you all in a second. Alright, we have the motherboard out. There's no signs of liquid on the... Uh, in a chassis like there usually is so I don't think this is going to be liquid damage <coughs> this is just going to be a case of one of those regulation MOSFETs going I don't want to live inside an Xbox anymore it's not fair they put too much power through my body uh, yeah one of them oh come on it's late guys it's very late and I'm very tired, so I'm going to start acting stupid very shortly. Right, so I'm going to take off this uh, ow, heat sink bracket by stabbing myself in the thumb again for the second time today. Look, look at that. That's an old cut and uh, that's a new cut. Twice today I've been, uh, I've stabbed myself in the thumb now. Um, yeah, I think I need to give that finger a rest and start using a different one. Ow! This is why I use my hand to uh, to stop myself causing damage. Um, if you look at uh, an Xbox One S I did a couple of a couple of days ago, you'll notice that I uh, I actually caused damage, and it wasn't pretty. Um, you should go ahead and watch that video if you want to know what happens when you're not careful taking these brackets off. Um, uh, I, I actually did the exact same job, replaced the power MOSFETs on a, an Xbox One S. Got the board working af after liquid damage. Uh, got all excited and beside myself and stabbed through the board. Yeah. Luckily the board still worked, but you should you should really go and check that out. Um, because it really brought it down on my day pretty fast. Uh, but yeah. And that's why I put my thumb in front of them to protect it. Usually. I usually do. Right. 
Uh, before we take that off, let's take the molten meat out once again, and let's just take. Whoops. Uh, what have I done? Something to my recording. <coughs> oh, never mind. It's fine. Right. Uh, let's just check these little caps on the back here for short. So we're going to go on ground. And those caps are shorted, so there's definitely a short on those, mo those MOSFETs somewhere. Or somewhere along the 12 volt line. Uh, not, not necessarily the MOSFETs, but it's somewhere along that 12 volt line. So, let's find out where, shall we? Alright, let's give you a closer view of what we're doing. Duck. Right. So here is our 12 volt rail. So on this rail we've got a few capacitors, some MOSFETs and whatnot. And these are what regulate the power going into the board. So um, power comes from here, uh, it goes through all of these rails here. So these are the three main MOSFETs what go. Uh, it goes through these rails here um, and then it spreads out to branches out to wherever it needs to go on the board um, and commonly what happens um, especially when there's liquid damage but there's none on this this board clean um, what ha what commonly happens is these little mosfets will uh, suddenly decide that they want to end their life and they'll just go kaboom um, so yeah I've just realised that that's all blurred focus there we go uh, yeah, so uh, we're going to test these MOSFETs and the way we're going to do that is there's a little resistor here next to each of these MOSFETs. Um, we're going to pop one probe on pin number one on the top of the MOSFET and the other probe on the left side of this resistor. Um, and I can't remember what colour or what, but one side we should get around about 0.58 and the other side should be around about 1.8 on the multimeter. So, we're in diode mode now. Right, so zooming out just so you can actually see <coughs> the multimeter at the same time. Uh, we're in diode mode. Uh, also, continuity mode. It's the same thing on this multimeter. There's no separate function for diode and con continuity. And like I said, we're going to pop one probe on the end of this resistor and the other probe on pin number one of the MOSFET. Here we go. some reason that's not giving us a reading but it should um, right let's pop it the other side let's pop it the other way see what happens so pin number one no reading so I think this is dead let's try this one Now reading. Um, hmm. Should be giving us some sort of reading, but we're getting nothing on any of them. Is that because it's shorted? I don't know. Or are we not giving a connection? I don't know. Right. Uh, bit strange. Right. For some reason, I'm not giving any readings on any of these MOSFETs, so what I think I'm going to have to do is just start taking them off one by one and see if it clears the short. So, at the minute, 
we still have a source on the board. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, what we're going to do, we're going to start taking these off one by one. So, and then we're going to find out after each one whether it's going to clear the short or not. Uh, the way we're going to do that is with beautiful hot air set to a very modest 480 degrees. So I'm going to move my multimeter out of the way a little bit because I don't want to melt it. Now I'm going to start with the far right. Uh, let's see if we can get you in closer first. There we go. <coughs> and like I said, we're going to start with this far right. There we go, there's one. So let's test and see if our short is gone. <coughs> Excuse me. Bit of a, a tickly throat tonight. Okay, we're still on. Wow, look at. No. Did I really get that on the first try? No, I didn't. Of course I didn't. Of course I didn't. Aww. Alright, so that one might be good. That one might be good. Let's try the next one in the line. Good. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's try that short again. I believe it's gone. Yep, that ladies and gents has cleared the short. Right, let's see if we get a reading on number three, shall we? I'm just going to leave the multimeter where it is. Whoops. I'm still not getting a reading. I don't know why. But the short has gone. That's ground. Right, I'm I'm on uh ground. Let me see if I can get a ground that you can actually see on the camera. Uh so I'm on ground there, so that is uh that's ground. And uh, that short is gone. That short is cleared. Right. So, most likely, just number two was bad and number three was good. So, we're going to put number three back on. That's what we're going to do. We're going to put number three back on and then we're going to check and see if the short comes back. Uh, so, number three was this one. So we're going to add a little tad of flux. Good. And then we're just going to pop this into place with some hot air.
Good. I'm assuming that's on, but I'm going to check it under the microscope quickly. Uh, but I'm assuming it's on. I'm going to just... <coughs> Excuse me. Right, okay. Where are we? Turn my light up. Perfect. That's on. Uh, so I'm not really going to worry about the soldering job too much yet. All I want to do is check and make sure that this has gone. So let's uh, let's knock this light back down so as it's not shining all over the place. Um, so let's test and see if the short is still there. Or rather, if it's come back. And again, to do that, we're going to use the same method. This was the one that didn't clear the short. Good. So, on the 12 volt line, we've got no short. Uh, so, we need to change this. So, I'm going to get a new one of them. Okie doke. Got ourselves a brand spanking new MOSFET. And I'm going to first make sure it's the right way around. Yep. And then I'm going to add a little dab of flux. What the hell is on the end of that? Oh, I don't know. Right, let's get some hot air going. Oh dear. Yeah, that didn't work out, work out well, did it? Okay, once again, I am assuming that is on, but I need to check it under the scope uh, because my eyesight is shocking and it's even worse when I'm tired. <laughs> That's nowhere near on. Well, I'm going to do this under the scope real quick. Uh, bear with me, I'm just going to add some more flux. I don't know what that is under my, uh, on the end of my nozzle. Here we go. Right, let's uh, see if we can show you what we're doing. So, excusing the really poor angle, unfortunately, that is the only angle I can get at the moment. We're going to do this from under the scope. So, I've added some more flux to that middle one. Okay, okay, that's on. Now we're going to use the soldering iron to finish up and clean up on the first and the second one that we changed. So we're going to add a bit more flux. Same there. And I'm just going to wait for my soldering iron to heat up. <coughs> it's 
bring this back over here. Okay, should be nice and warm now and uh, ready to clean up these pads. So we're just going to get the soldering iron and we're just going to run across these MOSFETs. So top, bottom and there's a little blob on the side. Same with this one. Good. Just gonna inspect this under the scope. shouldn't have any shorts on that so let's give that a clean as always I'm going to clean it with isopropyl alcohol and uh, a little bit of heat uh, so a little bit of heat is just going to help remelt that flux because flux always cleans up a lot better when it's warm so I don't want to get it too hot because I don't want to pull any components I'm keeping the nozzle fairly far away from the, uh, from the board I'm just going to clean up this entire area nice and clean and completely flux free. There we go, good. That isopropyl alcohol will evaporate itself. Let's test the shorts one more time and uh, to do that again, once again, we're going to do the exact same thing as last time. We're going to put one probe on ground. Uh, it's a bit of an awkward angle because the camera camera boom arm's in the way. And there we go. So we do get a temporary beep, but that's normal. Uh, but the beep goes away pretty much straight away. Uh, and that's as it should. So that one is ground. Um, as you can see, I'm touching ground there. So that, that pin there is ground. That one is ground. That one is ground. And these are all 12 volts. There we go. Short. Gone. Let's see if this works. Because I'm going to bet. I'm going to bet. That it's going to work. Uh, we. Okay. I've, just lo I've lost a MOSFET somewhere. Uh, I'll find it in a minute. I had two in this packet. Ah. There it is. So. This particular packet that I've got, I had two MOSFETs and the other one fell out. Lovely. So let's pop that back in. So that's what the MOSFETs come in. Uh, and I, I ordered two the other day because I needed them. Um, I don't really keep these in stock. Uh, I really should. I should buy a pack of them, but I don't because I'm a. Uh, I'm an idiot, but uh, never mind. At least we had some in stock. I generally just take them off donor boards. Um, I am low on donor boards now, though, so. Or rather, I'm low on donor boards that have those MOSFETs on. Right, let's get back over to the bench. Let's take our board. So we're going to start by popping the heat sink on, um, but just in case it works, I'm going to change the thermal paste while I'm while I've got it open because I don't want to take the heat sink back off if I don't need to. So let's clean up the uh, old paste. that a brush away to get rid of that and then we'll use a bit of IPA as well. I'm 
really need to be careful with this IPA now because uh, prices have gone up massively and I actually got not scammed because I'll get the money back but I fell for it uh, there's a Chinese seller that was selling an IPA five five litres for a tenner and I thought oh bargain they must have made too much because of the uh, current situation and they're just selling it off cheap but no uh, I looked this morning and he had um, 12 negative feedback in one night so yeah I opened a dispute with PayPal and I'm waiting to uh, get my money back on that but uh, never mind it happens I'm covered with PayPal buy protection so I'll be okay it's only a it's only ten pounds as well, which is about twelve US dollars. It's not a lot of money, but I'll get the money back anyway either way. So I'm not really fussed. Uh, it's still annoying uh, how you know the. I mean, the guy was based in China. Look, you'd think that given the fact that he was uh, at ground zero, you know, he'd uh, he'd have a little bit more compassion. But no, he's just trying to take advantage. Of, um, of the situation and the fact that people want isopropyl alcohol to make hand sanitizer um, I mean obviously that's not what we use it for but uh, yeah it's sad really it's really really sad right where's my heat sink there it is for some reason it was on the other side of my desk but yeah it's, it's really sad to see that you know someone who was at ground zero is taking advantage of people who just want to just want to protect the family um, but you're always going to get people like that that try and make money um, from everybody else's misery uh, you get people trying to make money from wills you know like people's wills uh, you know trying to scam people out of a few thousand pounds or whatever saying that they've inherited one of your relative wills and things like that uh, you get you get all sorts of things and I'll, I'll see I'll see it all the time especially as a technician if, you, if you're a technician and you work in a retail space you'll understand we come across so many people who say you know I need like antivirus I've, I've been scammed um, there was one lady. I'm not. I'm not going to go into too much detail. But she lost over thirty thousand pound. Um, to, uh, I think it was Indian scammers, uh, not to single people out, but I think it was Indian scammers. Uh, or she said they sounded Indian. I'm not going to single them out because I don't know. I wasn't there. But, you know, we see it all the time, and it's really sad. But it's even worse when there's that literally thousands and thousands and thousands of people dying and uh, people are still trying to take advantage of, of people's uh, naivety and not just naivety but their misery and sorrow and yeah I'm going to leave it there um, I'm not, I'm not going to really say much more on it. Uh, we all have our opinions and mine is that they are complete and utter scumbags. Right, so as always, I'm going to test this out of the uh, well, not out of the chassis, but I'm going to test it without reassembling it completely just in case. But I've got a feeling it's probably going to work now, and it's going to be a really quick, easy repair, which is always nice. Uh, it's nice to see nice quick easy repairs it's easy money and uh, not is it easy easy money but not is it just easy money but it's uh, also a lot cheaper for the customer so yeah I mean if I if I if I fix this now the customer's gonna pay 35 pound that's 30 pound bench fee and um, five pound for the cost of the MOSFETs that is eat that is all he's gonna pay which is about 40 US dollars which is very cheap for a no power diagnosis and repair so if this works now which hopefully it does then that's all he's going to be paying right we have a power supply this is the customer's power supply 
Um, he does have another power supply at home, if needed. So he's already bought one, uh, and I might offer to buy it off him um, at a reduced rate, of course. But I might offer to buy it off him if he doesn't need it. Just because they're always handy to have that is literally the only reason because they're handy to have and uh, if he's not going to need it I mean he was technically minded enough to uh, to try another power supply um, so fair play to him you know the more people that can fix their own stuff the better which is why I'm doing these videos um, and which is why a lot of us do these videos you know, in this in this uh, business because repair is good. Oh, okie doke. We almost have this assembled enough to test it. Uh, this is a bit annoying because the the anti-vibration foam on the uh, on the edge is a bit mangled up and it's not quite sitting in right because of it. Uh, Right, let's ignore that for now. I'll deal with that later. Uh, ah, there we go. I guess I'm dealing with it now. Right, front panel connector. I should really put this in before I put the disc drive in, shouldn't I? Uh, Wi-Fi card. Not going to screw anything down, of course. Uh, now we need power lead and HDMI lead. Sweet. And we have a fan spin. That fan spun. There we go. Awesome. Fantastic. That, ladies and gentlemen, um, I would say is probably repaired. Uh, let's see if we have anything on the screen. Fantastic, brilliant. This console is now repaired. It can have a new lease on life. Uh, I think the customer is going to put this in his living room, so we've got one in his bedroom and his living room, which is brilliant. Uh, I'm super happy. Yeah, love it. Let's go. Let's have it. Switch back over to the main screen. I'm going to turn this off. We're going to reassemble this, and then we're going to fully test it, make sure it all works. Okay. Okay, ladies and gents, we're back, and uh, as you can see, console is now fully reassembled. Uh, we have one beautiful, happy-looking console all the way around. Uh, so let's give this one final test, shall we? And then we will call this job complete. So. Pop in our cables. I haven't got a pia I haven't got a controller here, uh, so I'm going to just make sure it boots up to the dashboard, and then we'll call this one successful. Um, I shouldn't see there have been any other problems with it. it. Should be absolutely fine, and it should all work happy. Um, but yeah, as you can see, the software is loading. We have power, uh, so let's summarise. <coughs> So basically what happened with this one uh, is those tiny little MOSFETs that are on the 12 volt power rails suddenly decided I don't want to be in an Xbox anymore, it's cold and dark in here and no one loves me. And they just killed themselves, they committed suicide. Um, so yeah, they opened the gate and they just walked right out onto a bridge and jumped off it. That's just what happens sometimes with Xbox Ones. Um, but, no, in all seriousness, um, one of the MOSFETs went bad for no reason whatsoever. And um, simply finding the bad MOSFET and changing it, uh, as you saw, we replaced um, one MOSFET. We put the other one back because it, um, it didn't clear the short. And it works absolutely perfectly. And everything's going to be all happy days. So, yeah, that's it for now. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a comment down below if you... And let me know what you thought. Uh, if you want to see more repair videos like this one, um, hit that subscribe button. It really helps out the channel a lot. Um, and 
yeah, thank you all for watching, and until next time, see you all later. Bye for now.